Buckle up, friends, and welcome to the Thriving Alcohol-Free Podcast. I'm your host, Deb, otherwise known as Mocktail Mom, a retired wine drinker that finally got sick and tired of spinning on life's broken record called Detox to Retox. Let this podcast be an encouragement to you if alcohol is maybe a form of self-care for you, where you find yourself dragging through the day waiting to pour another glass. I am excited to share with you the fun of discovering new things to drink when you aren't drinking and the joy of waking up each day without a hangover. It is an honor to serve as your sober fun guide. So sit back and relax or keep doing whatever it is you're doing. This show is produced for you with love from the great state of Kentucky. Thanks so much for being here and big time cheers. All right. Hey, friends, it's Deb. Welcome back to Thriving Alcohol Free. I am so happy that you're here. I'm so excited. Today, I'm making a new friend again. This is the best part about having a podcast is getting to hear people's sober journeys, alcohol-free lifestyles, all the fun stuff. So Jessica from A Sober Girl's Guide is here with us today. And I, we've never met before. I've follow, I followed you on Instagram forever. I mean, forever. God, we've never Since met. Minute one. So thank you really? for coming on. Yeah. Yeah. From cool. way, way back when I was just window shopping sobriety. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was just a little window shopper. shopping when I was That's drinking cute. my wine and scrolling at night with the Instagram. Like, wow, look at these people. They're not drinking. Yeah, and you're like, oh, this chick, uh, here she is again, being all sober. <laughs> being all sober. <laughs> being all sober. Yes. So how long have you been alcohol free? Seven years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's like the seven year itch, right? No, that, probably not with sobriety. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, No, I, I don't think, I think it's just getting better. I mean, to be honest, I think around year three, and I kind of talked about this the other day, year three, it was a bit sticky because I had like expectations. Like I'm like, oh, I'm three years sober. Like the world owes me almost. And not to say... Like I wasn't super entitled, but I feel like, but I'm being so good. Like I'm being such a good person. Like why are maybe this, that, and the other not working out? Or like, why is this still happening to me? And I realized like, it doesn't matter how good you are. There's no such thing as being good or right or wrong because, you know, in everyone's perceptions of the world, you could be their hero or their you know, villain, right? It, it really doesn't matter. But like, I had this just expectation at three years. I'm like, okay, like, I've arrived, like, I'm ready to like, everything to be easy, kind of, I guess. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you feel like, like, almost like sobriety, like after time, it was gonna be like the magic wand, like everything else was just like all the edges of life, the rough times were all gonna be smoothed over because you weren't drinking anymore? Yeah, I kind of thought I'm like, I have this this not drinking thing down pat, totally. Like wasn't even, and and still isn't a main. I don't want to say focus, but not like a task that I have to monitor every day. It's kind of like I've done the work and I've I've really dissolved this pattern. However, other patterns mm. like to pop up, which are so much more ingrained and have so much for me personally just have such much longer legs and are so much more complex than my relationship with alcohol and that's where it gets real sticky that's where it gets yeah real hairy (laughs) yeah and that's where you know that we want to say the work that is where the work comes. And I don't know, maybe in three more years, I'll be like, cool, okay, well, I've also broken this pattern, or this kind of like relationship in my life. What am I owed now? <laughs> no, we're, just, yeah, we're always improving. Yeah, we're just yeah. always improving, right? We're getting, yeah. hopefully, we're always improving, I guess. That's the goal, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a, one step at a time, right? Like, yeah. like, what does the saying say? Like, 1% better. You know, it doesn't have to be a huge life altering monumental thing every day or every week, but I don't know, like one foot in front of the other. Yeah. And those little, good. little things over time, those little things over yeah. time, right? Within like, what, like you said, a year, three years, right? What did you call it? You said that the pattern is dissolved. I like that. I really yeah, like that. Yeah. The pattern has definitely 
dissolves. But like I said, I think in in kind of dissolving that pattern leads way to, you know, the the main event. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. main patterns that like is like the workhorse behind all these little kind of sub patterns that have popped up and habits that you've maybe created and maybe unhealthy relationships that you formed with this, that, and the other. It doesn't necessarily have to be alcohol. Yeah, it could be people. I mean, people, I don't know. I think people in our relationships in the world are in, insane. Like it's monumental how huge they are. Because oh, like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you think of life, like what is it really worth living if you don't have relationships? Jessica, I agree with you 100%. I think the only things that are eternal is God and our relationship with others, you know, who are going to see in eternity. I mean, we, you're going to have relationships. It is. It's the most important thing is our relationships. Yeah. We're created to be in relationship with others. We're not created to be in isolation. Yeah. But also, and then there's like, a, another kind of like third view of this is like your relationship to your relationships, you know, cause like you can't change others. You can only change how you are, are moving through the world. And so it's like your relationship with maybe that particular relationship or that, you know, brand of person or like personalities or dynamics. These are all patterns. These are all like things that we've come to learn or that have been ingrained in us. And yeah, I think changing and dissolving that pattern with alcohol has just allowed for for the main show to pop up. (laughs) The real show. Now the real shows arrive, people. Yeah. (laughs) It's very true though, because right, like before you stopped drinking, did you think, I thought like that was the one thing, right? That was the thing. And once that was taken care of, everything else is, but you're right. Like there's, then there's those other things, all the other things, you know, but like you said, we can only control ourselves. I can't control even how somebody else responds or what they say. Nothing. I can only control myself. Yeah. Yeah. And your relationship with that. Like, and that's the hardest. I find that's like the most interesting dynamic is your relationships with relationships. Mm. Mm. Very interesting. So my, my podcast, I, you know, we shared alcohol free stories and becoming sober, but like if somebody's just maybe, maybe they're in the beginning or they're just thinking about breaking up with alcohol or they're thinking about taking a little break, you know, what advice would you give them? Maybe if they're worried, you know, about taking a little break from alcohol or worried about life without drinking, you have any advice for somebody who's maybe worried about that? I think first and foremost, like those worries and those concerns are 100% valid. Because they're coming from either your judgments of other people changing their relationships or your perceptions of that, or maybe, you know, experiences or or things you've heard, like they're not coming out of nowhere. And you're right, like things are going to change 100%. And I think for anyone, change is terrifying, whether it's welcomed or not, it's just uncomfortable. It feels weird, right? Like, it's different. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily wrong. It's just different. So yeah, try and kind of lean in to be like, yeah, this feels weird. Great. Instead of, I think what I did for so many years, because it took me a while to get sober and to really see the value of sobriety. I think I denied almost like reality or I denied my feelings around maybe the loss of my relationship with alcohol. I kind of was like, no, this is fine. Like it's under control. I can handle it. Like, you know, whatever. Like I was totally negating all my feelings and my, and my thoughts about change. And it's very real. You know, it is, it is almost like a morning process. Like this, you are no longer this person. And it can be sad, but also I think it's really, really important to realize that we can experience two feelings at the same time and two very like polarizing feelings, right? Like you can maybe be in mourning of, of this person, of this girl who, you know, you used to know and you used to drink and this is how she used to cope with things, right? Maybe she was a bit of a party girl. Maybe she did drink for attention. Insert 
your um, <laughs> rationalizations and justifications for drinking here. But you can also, you can miss her and not necessarily need her or want her back. Kind of like a relationship, like any kind of relationship. Like you can miss this person, but if you're not compatible anymore, like if it's not working, you can still miss them, but also know that it's okay. Yeah. Like it's you okay to move on. You don't have to be with them. You can love them from afar. Exactly. That's yeah. a really good analogy. Yeah. It really is because it's you, you feel very conflicted in the beginning. Like, how can I miss Chardonnay? You know, how can I miss it? But I did, you know, but I was also enjoying, I was enjoying waking up without a hangover. I was enjoying sleeping through the night, you know, not waking up at 3 a.m. with the room spinning. So, like, but, but at the same time, I did grieve the alcohol. I was grieving. Yeah. It was something for so long, you know, kind of like, and I put parentheses around work. Yeah. It worked, right? Until, yeah. Yeah. until we kind of realized, like, oh, actually, this isn't what I want to do anymore. Yeah. And I don't think we, it's necessary to like villainize alcohol just because you're not drinking it. Agree. Totally agree. I don't love that. I don't like to take that approach and, and I don't. It's just something that, that I have chosen not to partake in. Like Same. it doesn't Same. work for me. So let's keep the ball moving, right? Like let, let's find out what does. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's so good. Yeah. That's yeah. So good. Like the law of attraction, like you want to find out, I want you to go towards what is working for you or be curious or, or, or be brave enough to find out what could possibly work for you. That's great. Such good advice. Okay. As you guys know, I love Geese and 0% Wines. Their Sauvignon Blanc is my go-to on a regular basis, but they recently launched a delicious sparkling brut 0%, which is quickly becoming a fan favorite. I am so proud to have Geese as the exclusive non-alcoholic wine sponsor of the Thriving Alcohol-Free Podcast. Geese and 0% Wines are created through the magic of advanced spinning cone technology to remove the alcohol from their full leaded wines. The award-winning winemaker Duncan Schuler and his team have done wonders in Marlboro, New Zealand by creating an entire family of 0% wines with all the flavor and deliciousness you expect from traditional, quote, full-leaded wine. Their non-alcoholic wines maintain the aroma in the body to create a low-calorie wine that never contains more than 0.5 ABV. Globally available, look for Geese and 0% wines wherever you shop for your non-alcoholic options. Their family of alcohol-free wines include the most effervescent member of the family, the Sparkling Brut 0%, which is absolutely delicious for any celebration. My personal favorite, although I do love them all, is the Sauvignon Blanc coming in at only 100 calories for the entire bottle. And not to be missed, the other members 0% family, the Riesling, the Premium Red Blend, the Rosé, the Pinot Gris. With Geese and 0% wines, there's a de-alcoholized wine for every and every occasion. Give Giesen a try and let me know how much you love it. And if you want to meet their winemaker, go back to episode 33 of the podcast where Duncan Schuler joined me to share about the Giesen story. Okay, so you started the Sober Girls Guide. A Sober Girls Guide, sorry, not the, right? A Sober Girls Guide. Okay, how did you start it? And where, where did this idea come from? And how did it get started? When did you start it? Sure. Okay, so I started this eight years ago now, nine, wow. almost wow. nine years ago. And it started off as, as just an Instagram account. And I was just kind of, um, I was also blogging and I was just kind of like plugging along and kind of like showcasing and, and, and writing about stuff that, that was working, you know, in my journey and what doesn't, and just basically like documenting like what was going on. Right. And then one day, you know, I'm very sassy, I'm pretty sarcastic. Unfortunately, that sarcasm doesn't like read well, literally like read well, um, <laughs> one, <laughs> one dimensionally, you know, uh, it can uh, be a little off putting. And this was, this was said to me by someone that I, I trust, love and okay. respect. And so I, I saw her point and I'm like, yeah, like touche. She's like, I love you. Cause I know you, you know what I mean? Like, I love reading your stuff because I know you and I know your tone and I can hear your voice when I'm reading it. But to anyone reading this, they would just think you were an a-hole. So I took that to heart. I'm like, you know what? Touche. I see that. And so she said, you know, it would be really cool to do like a podcast. Like I would love to hear, you know, your sarcasm and your personality actually come through in a podcast. I'm like, that actually sounds really good because also doing this solo 
is very lonely. Yeah, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, so it's really hard. And so doing a podcast and bringing on guests and meeting people, like this is everything I ever wanted. So fun, yeah. And that's how the podcast happened. And then, yeah, the blog continued. I kind of took out a little bit of the sassiness in the blog, you know, made some adjustments. You learn, you grow, live, laugh, love. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, that's kind of how it all started. It just kind of started with me actually, you know, creating the space of like just documenting in real time what was working, what maybe wasn't working and how to pivot. Wow. Wow. And how, how has it evolved? How is it now? Like what is a sober girl's guide now? Yeah. I mean, it's basically, that's kind of like our, still our principles, right? It's like to document, to be very like hands-on practical tools. And I found, oh, I should mention back in the earlier stages, I went back and I got my coaching certification. So I then started one-on-one coaching and then that moved into group coaching and it was just hard for me to manage. And I'm like, okay, I am only one person. This is ridiculous. Like I'm not able, I'm, I was just spread too thin and, and I just felt like I wasn't doing a good enough job coaching and our clients deserve better. And I recognize that. And so I now have a group of fantastic women. We have six coaches who are coaching within our Sober Girl Social Club which is a a monthly membership. And we have support circles every day of the week. Um, We're adding another one actually coming up in a couple of weeks. So we're going to have two on Wednesdays. Um, And we have a book club. We have a really robust group chat, which is really fun. And then we have like challenges inside of the membership. So it's just a great way to like really help a lot of women at once and have it like served by really amazing coaches who are so much better than me because like I realized I can't do it all. And that took a long time to realize that because I want to do it all. Yeah. We want to, yeah, you want to, you want to. And it's like, yeah, we just, you're one person, you're one person. And as it continues to grow and stuff, you just, you can't serve everybody one-to-one or yeah, have one-on-one meetings or stuff. Totally. too much. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, like I just felt really guilty that the level and the quality of coaching that I was just solely providing wasn't there. And I think I did the best possible thing is to hire amazing coaches who are so much better than me. That's great. That's great. So how, how do they get certified or what is that? What is the coaching certification? Yeah. So they've all kind of done their, their own certification, but then I've also taught my method through our group coaching program and one-on-one just kind of like our, our like philosophies and our kind of like steps to building a really solid foundation. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. So when you're not drinking, which is probably all the time now, right? Yeah. <laughs> all the time. What do you like? Is there something in particular that you like to drink or particular mocktail that you like or not okay. a wine or beer? Do you have any of those favorites? Yes. I mean, my problem is I love all of it. But right now, in particular, I'm going to get really specific. I am so obsessed. Like, I can't get enough of it that I've been buying, like, family-sized bottles that are, like, as big as my torso. It's GT's Kombucha in grape flavor. GT's Kombucha in grape flavor. Really? So GT Kombucha. Yeah, GT is the, the, the OG. He is, like, one of the originators. And I actually know a little bit of his story. He he started off making kombucha. His mom was sick, I believe, of cancer. Oh wow! And so they did a lot of off the record treatments, and they got really into kombucha. So they were making it like as a family, and then he just made a business out of it. And actually, I don't know if I'm totally making this up, but who knows? We could fact check it later. But Google this I, later. Someone check this afterward. <laughs> I only know this because a f- close personal friend of mine, because I used to DJ, and one oh, of the clubs, really? yeah, one of the clubs back in LA, this is like years ago when I first got sober, they had GTs on tap at the bar. 
Really? And yes. And the bar owner was really good friends with GT. That's so cool. Yeah. And he said that like, oh, he got approached by like uh, Pepsi Cola to like buy out, yeah. you know, buy out the brand. And he was like, no, he like stood ground. He wow. kept his, you know, his integrity. And cause you know, they, they change products. They like everything changes when you kind of like yeah. Oh, yeah. sell yeah. out. Yeah. It, it just happens. Right. Yep. Yeah. I thought that was really cool of him. And he's created such an amazing, like, killer business and wow. amazing kombucha is like incredible so the grape the grape is the top one but for there's you. something about the grape i'm on a grape kick right now okay and the I'll grape just like lily she loves hits grape. it oh That's so awesome okay i'm so glad to know that and i i put it in a wine glass like a stemless wine glass nice it's so good and it's just my like treat every night yeah oh that's awesome i love that yeah to have something special like that yeah. Yeah. So that's, and I don't drink it during the day. It's like solely like after work, like tonight, I'm going to probably have a bath and then watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh, Beverly Hills. Are you a Beverly Hills girl? You know what? I got to uh-huh. be honest. I am like a fair weather fan. <laughs> I have become that. I used to be very loyal. I used to be very, I used to be very religious about watching it. And now I may, uh, yeah, not so yeah. much anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. But are you loving the whole Kyle being sober? Oh, that's why I'm here. I'm literally here for Kyle. I just started watching it this season. Yes, I love. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I'm. So, I'm very happy that she's. Uh, she's being a face. You know. Of yes. Sobriety. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very interesting to hear the comments the other women are making and stuff. And it's like, oh my gosh, shut up, just let her be. Right. Yeah. I mean, it also is like. A reality it's a, show. It's a drama show, right? So obviously, yeah, yeah. you're right. No, you're right. So you're right. You're right. they're like definitely, you know, playing devil's advocate you're and right. really egging her on. But it you're also right. just shows everyone like how stupid you look by questioning someone's your exact choices. Right. Yeah, you're totally right. No, you're totally right. Yeah. Yeah. Just stand your ground. Yep. And keep walking in your sobriety. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I'm here for Kyle. That's so 100%. awesome. Okay, yeah, we'll have to see how this season turns out. What happens? Mm-hmm. What happens with Kyle? All oh aspects gosh. of her life. Yes. Okay, but you mentioned you were a DJ. Mm-hmm. Was that so fun? Yeah. I mean, like anything, it, it's a job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I know it's like it has nothing to do with like a sober it girl's. Sounds just, yeah, it like, sounds great. Like, it sounds great on yeah, paper, yeah, but it's a but it's work. You're at work. You're not at the party. You're at work. I mean, yes and no. That was like really the time where I really did drink a lot. And I did do a lot of drugs. So oh, wow. yeah, yeah, very different time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was fun until I'm like, is this it? Like, is this all I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life? Is like in nightclubs, like night after night, like traveling alone. Like, yeah, it's boring. Gets boring. Yeah, you're pretty made quick. For, made for more, for sure. Okay, so you're drinking your. Uh, grape kombucha, GTs. Uh, what about when you go out to a restaurant? What do you like to order to drink? I am definitely open to trying if they have any certain like concoctions, or I will definitely just like throw the bartender a wild card and be like, give me your best shot, basically. Surprise me. Give me your yeah. best shot. Oh, I like that. That'd be a good title for a good uh, name for a, a mocktail. Give me your best shot. Yeah, totally. Yeah, just like that. That's what we need to tell the bartenders. Give me your best shot mocktail. Yeah. Yeah. That's Hit perfect. Me. Hit me. Hit me. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, because I I like to be surprised and like I always like I said, speaking of patterns, I always kind of get into the same old, same old. So at this point in my life, hit me. Like mix it up. Let's yeah. get wild. Yeah. <laughs> crazy with mocktails, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's awesome. And if that isn't, and if they don't want to play with me, like they don't want to reciprocate, that's cool. I will basically order what I call a classic sober girl, which is lime juice, muddled mint, like a lot of mint and a lot of ice and then soda water over top. Oh, like a little mojito, like a little. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so but good. Like no sugar, no syrup, no. Yeah. Just a little. Mm-hmm, keep it clean. Yeah. Nice. Very yeah. nice. I love it. Jessica, thank you. Thank you yeah. for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. I wish me. we could have like a little watch party for the housewives, you know? I like, know. I'd love to be like in a group text of like, what's happening, you know? Like, well, we do talk about it in our like oh, Silver Girl Social Club. But that's I, very fun. That's and very by, fun. by we talk about it, it's mainly me. 
<laughs> I'm right there with you. I mean, it's it's embar- It's honestly, it's embarrassing that I'm really that I do really like the. I'm not into I mean, all of them. Fun. I'm not into all. The, it's like if that's the worst thing I'm doing in my life right now is watching stupid housewives once a week or whatever. It's fine. Yeah, I think it's good. Okay, so everybody can find you on Instagram. A sober girl's guide is your Instagram handle. Website yes, is the same. Easy to find. And um, thank you for everything that you're doing in the sober space and just for your encouragement to so many women. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, You too. Thank you for, for being on here today. Really, really appreciate it. Big time cheers to you for tuning in to the Thriving Alcohol Free Podcast. I hope you will take something from today's episode and make one small change that will help you to thrive and have fun in life without alcohol. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, Please share it with others, post about it on social, send up a flare, or leave a rating and a review. I am cheering for you as you discover the world of non-alcoholic drinks and as you journey towards authentic freedom. See you in the next episode.